On the 15th of March, we honor St. Louis de Marillac, who was the co-founder, along with St. Vincent de Paul, of the Daughters of Charity. Louise was born out of wedlock on August 12, 1591, near Le Mans in France. She belonged to the nobility, but her experience of personal rejection by her family as a child born outside of marriage made her particularly sensitive to the suffering of others. Nevertheless, she was cared for and received an excellent education at the Royal Monastery of Poissy near Paris, where her aunt was a Dominican nun. Around the age of 15, Louise felt drawn to the cloistered life. She later made an application to the Capuchin nuns in Paris, but was refused admission. It is not clear if her refusal was for her continual poor health or other reasons, but her spiritual director assured her that God had other plans for her. Devastated by this refusal, Louise was at a loss as to her next step. When she was 22, her family convinced her that marriage was the best alternative. Her uncle arranged for her to marry Antoine Legra, secretary to Queen Mary. Antoine was an ambitious young man who seemed destined for great accomplishments. Louise and Antoine were wed on February 5, 1613. In October, the couple had their only child, Michael. Louise grew to love Antoine and was an attentive mother to their son. Along with being devoted to her family, Louise was also active in ministry in her parish. She had a leading role in the Ladies of Charity, an organization of wealthy women dedicated to assisting those suffering from poverty and disease. Around 1621, Antoine contracted a chronic illness and eventually became bedridden. Louise nursed and cared for him and their child. In 1623, when illness was wasting on Tua, depression was overcoming Louise. In addition, she suffered for years with internal doubt and guilt for having not pursued the religious calling she had felt as a young woman. She was fortunate to have a wise and sympathetic counsellor, Francis de Sales, then in Paris, and then his friend, the Bishop of Belly. She vowed not to remarry if her husband died before her. She also believed that she had received the insight that she would be guided to a new spiritual director whose face she was shown. When she happened to meet St. Vincent de Paul, she recognized him as the priest from her vision. Three years after this experience, in 1625, Antoine died. Widowed and lacking financial means, Louise had to move. St. Vincent lived near her new dwelling. At first, he was reluctant to be her confessor, busy as he was with his confraternities of charity. Members were aristocratic ladies of charity who were helping him nurse the poor and look after neglected children, a real need of the day. But the ladies were busy with many of their own concerns and duties. His work needed many more helpers, especially ones who were peasants themselves and therefore close to the poor and able to win their hearts. He also needed someone who could teach them and organize them. Only over a long period of time, as St. Vincent de Paul became more acquainted with Louise, did he come to realize that she was the answer to his prayers. She was intelligent and had physical strength and endurance that belied her continuing feeble health. The missions he sent her on eventually led to four simple young women joining her. Her rented home in Paris became the training center for those accepted for the service of the sick and poor. Growth was rapid and soon there was the need for a so-called rule of life, which Louise herself under the guidance of St. Vincent, drew up for the Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul. St. Vincent had always been slow and prudent in his dealings with Louis and the new group. He said that he had never had any idea of starting a new community, that it was God who did everything. Your convent, he said, will be the house of the sick, your cell a hired room, your chapel the parish church, 
your cloister, the streets of the city, or the wards of the hospital. Their dress was to be that of the peasant women. It was not until years later that St. Vincent de Paul would finally permit four of the women to take annual vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. It was still many more years before the company would be formally approved by Rome and placed under the direction of Vincent's own congregation of priests. Many of the young women were illiterate. Still, it was with reluctance that the new community undertook the care of neglected children. Louise was busy helping wherever needed, despite her poor health. She travelled throughout France, establishing her community members in hospitals, orphanages and other institutions. Louise led the company of daughters until her death. Nearing her death, she wrote to her nuns, Take good care of the service of the poor. Above all, live together in great union and cordiality, loving one another in imitation of the union and life of our Lord. Pray earnestly to the Blessed Virgin that she might be your only mother. After increasingly ill health, Louise died six months before the death of her dear friend and mentor, St. Vincent de Paul. She was sixty-eight and the Daughters of Charity had more than forty houses in France. The nuns have always been held in high repute and have made foundations in all parts of the world. Louise de Marillac was canonized in 1934 and declared patroness of social workers in 1960. Placing all our petitions before her, let us pray. Loving and compassionate God, we celebrate with great joy the faith and works of St. Louise de Marillac. Instill in us the fire of her love, the tenacity of her belief, and the tenderness of her care for the most abundant. Draw us together into the light of your presence, and help us to trust in the power of your Spirit, leading us ever closer to you, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.